At life's crossroad, I can see light from beyond, amidst the trees, the shrubs, the undergrowth. I might escape, perhaps even hide, into the counterpoint of what lies in front or behind I choose. The body is fragile, the mind is strong, laid down, open to submission, I look upon myself in awe, exposed, embodied, incapacitated. Who are these people around me? Do I know them? Such trust in science, in humanity. It's not all broken, you know. Just a little bit, here and there. Nothing that can't be fixed through your expert hands. There she goes. The heart chanting. Badoop, doop, doop. Singing in all her glory, her beauty, her strength. A toast to life, always. I can dance to your tune, I can dance to your rhythm, but I'll just wait a bit, just a little while, I think. Can you feel me? Can you hear me? No, not yet? I'll just wait a little bit, just a little while. A bedrock of strength amidst chaos, all tangled paths that lead to each other, how did we get there? I move away, little at a time, poco a poco, still connected as always, little glances along the way, a glimpse here and there, powered by science, driven by energy, a passage we both shall take you at the stream. Image of peace and tranquility, once a sea of fluidity, rising high above the sky, holding onto the cusp of life. Visiting imaginary places, secret places, Places that I shall forget, forget to remember. Can you hear me? No? Still not? I'll wait a little while, just a bit more, while you make me well again. Visions of peace, I feel you. Visions of sound, I hear you. The soul revisited into the realm of transference, changing landscapes of space and time, fluid and cool air circulating, amorphous, amoebic, alluring. The call is made. Homecoming. Time to return, to unite. The path is familiar, the road clear. People and places greet, I can see light. Enter and heal, I can feel love. Life is reaching out. Time immemorial. I hear the call, a little nudge, perhaps not so little after all. Signaling response. My heart beats musically, 
new passages, novel routes, searching for new understandings. And greeting the Temple of Health, I am here to stay. Welcome me home while I grow. Rejuvenation in wellness. A Song of Silent Wonders is an audio play written and read by Rebecca King with original music composed by Lily Blundell. Your name is Elsa Bosselman, an artist with an interest in zoology. 
The year is 1930 and you are walking and tripping across the deck of a boat off the coast of Bermuda. You are here with the Department of Tropical Research, headed by your eccentric employer, William B. The DTR is sending scientists deeper and deeper into the depths of the sea than any human being has ever gone before. Your job has been to draw up pictures of various specimens to try to capture them as they looked in life. When it comes to the reefs in the shallows, a diving suit has allowed you to go down and look at the creatures in the eye. You've even invented a method of propping up a canvas on a music stand and using acrylics to paint underwater, a symphony of colour. But the attention of the team has turned to stranger, deeper places, and this time it's far too dangerous for you to dive yourself. There, on the deck of the boat, is Gloria Hollister, scientist and chief technician, perched on a crate and fiddling with a rudimentary telephone which is wired to the bathysphere. And there is Otis Barton, the inventor of the bathysphere, who, in 1938, will star with Beeb in a Hollywood movie based on their experiences called Titans of the Deep. And there is the bathysphere itself a steel ball just big enough for Beeb and Barton to squeeze into together with a small round window for them to press their faces against as the cables and winches lower them into the sea. Your pencil busies itself on the page of your sketchbook. You imagine how it will look, suspended in the gloom, the beam of its lonely light catching the shapes of creatures never seen before. You say to Gloria, write down every detail, no matter how small. She nods and waves you away, too busy to think about your artwork. You will rely on that telephone and notebook of hers for the precious descriptions that the men will send crackling up to the surface. Technically, she's monitoring their safety, but everyone knows that if the line cuts out and the voices stop, there will be nothing that Gloria or anyone else can do. Back in your studio on the island, you pour over the new batch of notes from the latest descent. Bloated, fading specimens lie neglected on your desks and shelves. Nothing compares to the creatures in motion, alive in their strange wilderness. You close your eyes and try to conjure them, try to see them wriggling, writhing, wheeling. The sound of the tree frogs outside the window makes it almost impossible. You must plug your ears. Only silence will do. The silence of the bathysphere, suspended in the dark abyss. First... A school of hatchet fish. You have seen lifeless specimens before, with tubular eyes and gaping mouths. Now you must try to feel the way they swim, like mourners hurrying to some funeral. That's what the men told Gloria. That's what she's scribbled down. A look of... what does that say? Lamentation? Yes, lamentation. What song are they singing? What sound would they make if they were music in the water? As the imagined song fades away, the hatchet fish have appeared on the paper in front of you. You have captured their tragic faces. The haunted waters swallow them up again, and the silence of the dark returns. Now, hungry, grinning mouths glint peculiarly in the beam of the bathysphere. You seize a fresh piece of paper and begin again. This time you must picture the predatory creatures, Squat and ugly anglerfish with faces full of needle teeth, dragonfish and viperfish snapping and biting. You will call this picture Big Bad Wolves of an Abyssal Chamber of Horrors. Beeb and Barton saw many monsters passing by, ravenous and prowling. 
But there, in the narrow spotlight, they chanced to see a hunt take place. A gulper eel, just like the one lying dead in a tray on your desk, here full of frenzied life, gaping and yawning towards a tiny and defenceless fish. For a moment, it seemed as if the prey had escaped. The eel writhed and flung out its tail like a streamer, dazzled by the unexpected light of the bathysphere's torch. But the small fish was just as stunned and, hesitating as to where it ought to dash, went tumbling at last into the jaws of the gulper. deep sea is as beautiful as it is cruel. In the wake of the hunt, bioluminescence twinkles in the sides of shrimps and jellies, and in the organs of fish with translucent skin that bob and float in and out of view like fairies in a meadow on a night without a moon. You work hour after hour with Gloria's notes, reconstructing in your mind's eye every scene the men described, and translating those sensations into illustrations that go on to grace the covers of magazines across the world. You are the first artist to capture life in the secret sea. In your work, anyone can look through Beeb and Barton's eyes as if they too were crouching in the bathysphere pressed against the little round window. There is only one thing that you could not capture. Every now and then, amongst the scribbles, a hanging phrase, a broken sentence, scattered adjectives appear and then are left unfinished. We saw a... something. Big. Long. Squat. Strange. There's a movement which looks... We felt something. When you close your eyes sometimes, and the sounds of the world subside, you are there again in your mind's eye. In the darkness, something is alive and moving, just out of sight of the bathysphere's beam. It is the thing not yet discovered. As the years pass by, and the ocean is explored, this is the mystery that remains unsolved. A song of silent wonders, waiting to be fathomed in the deep.
monumental tropical rainforests of Malaysia, in the heart of Southeast Asia, are among the oldest and most biologically diverse in the world. Many of its flora and fauna are found nowhere else. Tropical rainforests act as the lungs of the planet, absorbing carbon dioxide while producing a significant amount of the world's oxygen. They stabilize global weather, produce nourishing rainfall, and prevent floods, droughts, and erosion. Forests teeming with plants and wildlife still cover about 54% of Malaysia's land area, but only 11% is pristine. Deforestation is a major concern due to urbanization, agriculture, and logging activities. Loss of habitat leads to human-wildlife conflict with tragic outcomes. Poaching of plants and animals for the multi-billion dollar illegal wildlife trade is also a major threat. Four conservation initiatives are making a difference in Malaysia's dense jungles. Tropical Rainforest Conservation and Research Centre, TRCRC, protects increasingly rare and endangered plant species. Project Monyet is documenting and photographing its entire 26 primate species. Gaia focuses on its hornbills, of which 10 species can be found here, and Rimau strives to save the critically endangered Malayan tiger. The biggest of the big cats, tigers live in a range of environments across Asia. One of its nine subspecies, magnificent Malayan tigers, are found only in peninsular Malaysia. Tigers, unlike domestic cats, love being in water to cool off and even have webbed paws. They are solitary creatures. In the rainforest, tigers occur at very low densities of one to two tigers per hundred square kilometers due to lack of prey and meat only to mate. In the 1950s, some 3,000 tigers roamed Malaysia's jungles. Today, with less than 200 left in the wild, the Malayan tiger is critically endangered. Poaching is rampant. Every part of the tiger, from whisker to tail, is traded in illegal wildlife markets. Their parts are used for traditional medicine, local remedies, and increasingly as status symbols. Snares are used by poachers to catch tigers and other wildlife who then die a painful, lingering death. The Javan, Bali and Caspian tigers are already extinct. Rimau, founded by Lara Arifin, Harun Rahman and like-minded friends, was set up in 2018 to prevent Malaysia's national animal from going extinct as well, through advocacy, partnerships, increasing awareness and putting boots on the ground. Together with the Perak State Parks Corporation, Rimau has developed a community-based wildlife protection patrol unit called Menrak. This is a specialized wildlife patrol outfit that is made up entirely of the local indigenous Jahai community. With their protection, it is hoped the Malayan tiger survives to remain as monarch of the rainforest. If the tiger is magnificent, hornbills are marvelous, 
with their improbably large distinctive beaks topped with an enlargement called a cask. The rhinoceros hornbill is so named for its particularly splendid cask and is believed to have mystical powers. Ten species of hornbills can be found here. They are omnivorous and by regurgitating seeds, they help grow more trees in the jungles. Hornbills are monogamous and pair for life. They nest in tree cavities, either formed naturally or created by the likes of woodpeckers, sun bears or fungi. They return to the same nest year after year. The female seals itself into the cavity using fruit pulp, mud, debris and feces. The male feeds it and the chicks when they hatch through a small opening. This can go on for up to six months depending on the species. Hornbills are threatened by loss of habitat, especially logging of large trees with suitable nest cavities. The helmeted hornbill is hunted in Asia for its ivory-like cask and is today critically endangered. Gaia was initiated by ecologist Dr. Ravinder Kaur and photographer Sanjit Pal Singh for hornbill research and conservation in Malaysia. Their work includes documenting and studying these unusual birds, planting fruit trees favoured by them, restoring natural tree cavities and building artificial nests. Collaborating with conservation initiative Hutan, Gaia have set up artificial nests along the Kinabatangan River at over 20 metres in height in the canopy for these bodacious birds. In time, Hornbills have started using them to raise their young, thus bringing hope for their future. Along with hornbills, the canopy of the Malaysian rainforest is also home to a delightful array of monkeys and apes. 26 species of primates can be found here, the second highest of any Asian nation. Tragically, 19 of them are on the edge of extinction, with the International Union for Conservation of Nature, or IUCN's Red List, classifying Bornean orangutans and the Bornean banded langur as critically endangered. Peter Ong started Project Monyet, or the Monkey Project, as part of Roots and Shoots Malaysia in 2017 when, under the instigation of legendary primatologist Jane Goodall, he discovered there was a dearth of information on Malaysia's primates. Four species have had no research done on them. There was a need for images to help researchers learn about our closest living relatives. And so began this quest to photograph all 26 species. Orangutans, for instance, share 97% of our DNA and many more of our physical traits than even chimpanzees. Weighing up to 90 kilograms, they are highly intelligent, use tools and have great capacity to solve problems. They eat a variety of fruits and build complex nests to sleep in every night. A mother will raise her baby alone for six to seven years and will only have a new baby every eight years, a very low reproductive rate. Peter tries to capture the souls of these endearing creatures in his photographs, which he hopes will raise awareness on the urgent need for conservation of Malaysia's primates threatened by loss of habitat and the illegal trade in baby monkeys and apes. 
The loss of biodiversity is one of the greatest environmental challenges the world faces. Tropical Rainforest Conservation and Research Centre, TRCRC, led by Dr. Zeman Zulkifli, was established in 2012 to restore tropical rainforests and address the critical rate of biodiversity loss in Malaysia. TRCRC's mission is twofold to preserve tropical rainforest plant species and lead landscape-wide protection and reforestation projects throughout the country. Up to 80% of Malaysian rainforests are dominated by the Diptocarpaceae family of trees, of which over 50% or 93 species are red-listed. They have a slow reproductive cycle. Seeds are produced during mass flowering and fruiting events, which occur only every five to seven years. This is a spectacular sight in the rainforest. Collecting seeds is one of the main aims of TRCRC. These seeds must be germinated and planted to create a living collection of trees that can reproduce perpetually. Seeds from this living collection are then used for future reforestation projects. The Malaysian rainforest and its inhabitants are interdependent. Hornbills and primates ensure the propagation of the trees they call home through seed dispersal. Tigers serve as apex predators. They control natural prey populations, which in turn control vegetation, part of the food web that is essential for the survival of the rainforest. Preserving as well as restoring and reconnecting degraded or fragmented rainforests due to logging, agriculture and development while conserving its remarkable wildlife help ensure humanity has enough oxygen to breathe and water for drinking, agriculture and industries while preventing devastating natural disasters. The efforts of Rimau, Gaia Project Monyet and TRCRC have far-reaching benefits, creating an abundantly beneficial and breathtaking kaleidoscope for future generations to marvel at and enjoy.